theme of my uh, story today is too little but never too late and it's I guess my my journey to finding my passion and I'm going to tell you the story through uh, the lens of becoming a civil engineer and there's three significant stopping points on this journey when I first experienced education at primary school level and at secondary school level much of it was prescriptive and not very interesting and as a result I ignored it. I, I checked out of education. If there was a price to be paid for that it was the rather circuitous route that I took to uh, discovering the joy that exists within learning. There was another problem as well. At 17 uh, very few people know what their passion in life is and, and that's certainly the way it was for me also. But there was one thing that I was sure about and that was whatever I was going to do for the rest of my life, it had to be something that really, really interested me. The kind of thing that you would just do anyway. And that's the second, the lead into the second part of my story which is based solely on an interest in drawing and particularly technical drawing, I decided to embark on a career in architecture. Now, the sins of the past caught up with me at this stage and without an adequate background in mathematics and physics and chemistry, uh, I wasn't free to participate at university level in such a programme. So instead, I undertook a two-year programme in architectural technology at one of the Institutes of Technology. And it was during this period, while working on summer work experience, that I discovered the intrigue of structural engineering. How numbers on a page could be transformed into an engineering drawing which would specify the number and the size of bars that were needed in a concrete beam so that it could span a large opening and do so safely. I followed on from this course and pursued a degree in structural engineering uh, after which I won a position with a consulting engineering company in the United States. And here I worked on some many, many interesting and fascinating projects. For example, the design of a full-scale load test for a church that was constructed out of structural steel but done so in a way that didn't fit the everyday square or rectangular type of structure. It had lots of nuances that complicated the structure. And we had to design a full-scale load test that would verify that this structure was capable of carrying the loads that it was designed for. Another example was investigating why suddenly an eight-storey building collapsed into the ground. These were fascinating projects and uh, led me to an interest in education and I suppose the third part of my story and that is the, the desire to, to share my experiences with young people who wanted to become engineers and to do so in a way that would be engaging and enjoyable. I found, uh, I found myself that I always learned best and gained a deep understanding when I was involved in doing things. And it was the University of Limerick that then provided me with this opportunity. Five years ago, I was involved in designing a brand new civil engineering program that incorporated these values, incorporated the learning by doing philosophy. We used many pedagogical approaches uh, and at the heart of these was problem-based learning. Now problem-based learning is a scenario where students are given problems, they're open-ended, they're complex and they're messy and they're given these problems in advance of having received the knowledge that they need to solve them. And it has been extremely rewarding to watch these young people oozing with enthusiasm 
for being given the autonomy to form an educational model and a learning model that brought them to very, very great heights. So out of this story emerged four observations for me. The first is that people's CVs are not as they appear on paper. They hide or mask the twists and turns that life presents. And it is through negotiating these twists and turns that we really uh, become robust people and find our accomplishments very rewarding. The second is that we should trust our own abilities and never let anyone set limits for us. The third item would be that we should have the confidence and foster the freedom to think for ourselves. It's a very gratifying experience and I think you would be surprised, pleasantly surprised, at the benefits it would bring. And finally, we should always make time to do nothing, because in doing nothing is where great ideas are born. If you're interested in finding out more about our civil engineering programme at the University of Limerick, feel free to contact me for further information.